so we were just talking in the, to no one for like eight minutes just now. So welcome to Signal Booze. What's up? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't going live and it didn't tell us that it wasn't going live. So sorry guys. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. We were on time. We started at we seven. We started. We were just chatting away and then we were like, something's not right here. Yeah, it didn't, uh, didn't come up. But we're here again. Hello. We're back. I'm Sorocket. Welcome to the Boost. I'm Alicia. Communications director at the generator. Education director at the generator. Best friends for 11 years. Cow pokes, just a couple of just cow pokes. Some mustache monies. Mm. Uh, what's it's a summer? It's a summer vibe. Yeah, it's the summer vibe. Hats, mustaches, mm -hmm. hats and stash. Uh, welcome to episode 15 of Signal Boost, Reno's art and culture live stream that we do every Saturday night, seven to eight. Here at the generator, your local makerspace. Mm -hmm, Hi. Mm -hmm. Hello. We're gonna do this fast because now we're eight minutes behind. Yes. So we're gonna go right into what's new with you, and I have to redo my whole part. I'll do my own. You want to go first? Go. Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. So what's new with me? <laughs> so a thing that's new with me is we're coming up on the first ever generator summer camp, kids summer camp. Um, it's gonna be an installation art intensive. What we mean by that is it's a five day camp. It's nine to noon. Monday through Friday, the 21st to the 24th of June, so coming up in a week and a half, and are coming up, yeah, no, in a week and two days, and um, we're going to have Lina Liz is going to be our guest artist for this, and um, she and I will be teaching the camp, and basically the kids get to work together as and collaborate on a installation art piece from conception to installation and they will be creating it here at the generator and then it will become part of our like activities that we are going to be doing at the uh, at, at an art town event here at the generator so that that'll be in july so that'll be really cool and really fun and if you've got a kiddo that you know and you love between you know around eight and 14 ish <laughs> you know I, I have on there I think it's 8 to 12 on the thing but it would be fine if they were a little older um yeah sign them up it'll be really fun so this mustache is reminding me of the um Sasquatch character on We Bear Bears just saying that is, but... yeah if you guys know about it hit us up in the chat <laughs> Uh, what's new with me is that my uh, family, my dad and my sister and my stepmom are here and they got to meet my son Cassidy for the first time ever. And mm -hmm. my sister and I did this cool block printing class uh, that we did with Aaron here at the Jenny yesterday. Uh, so fun. And my sister was like, oh, I don't, I'm not really an artist. I don't make art, but I want to try. And she did so good. She made this beautiful desert scape. Here's a little reveal of it. Yeah, and, and uh, if you feel like that about art, you know, like, oh, you're not traditionally like a visual artist, um, I would super suggest trying out block printing. It's something I've taught as well in the past, and it's a really cool art form um, because it's really hard to get wrong. Like, anything you make with that, it looks dope. Like, obviously, the people who are super skilled at it, you can really tell, and some people are making, like, really um, incredible work with it, but even people who are just starting out, like, everything you make in that format seems to look pretty rad so you should check it out yeah um, it's amazing it's a good class um Go Aaron. yeah so we did that and what's also cool <laughs> is that the if you remember a few weeks back we talked about the charred card that was for sale at urban roots and actually the woman who made that card was in class with me marla and she's the Marl Fox on Instagram. She works for Urban Roots and makes cards, and she's sometimes at the Riverside Farmer's Market. So that's super rad. Yeah. Um, follow her. More, more artists doing mm -hmm. cool stuff. And also, we're going to go to the Great Awakening oh. Festival next week. <laughs> And it's gonna be super fun. Um, we're gonna be wearing mustaches all weekend. That's why we wore these. Mustache this mommies. Is our, this, is the, this is the vibe. We're going for. So this is a brand new festival. Uh, they reached out to us a couple months ago now, a few months ago, asking about art and stuff. And originally they were gonna have it in California, but they had to move it because of fire stuff. And now it's gonna be on our friend's property. So we were like, well, we have to go. And the cool thing is they're giving us comp tickets. Yeah. And we're gonna give away one ticket to the Great Awakening Festival. Yeah, so if you wanna come party with us at the Great Awakening, Wear a mustache, 
put a mustache on top of your mustache. You've got extra mustaches with your name on them. Yeah, so to get the ticket, here's what you're gonna do. Okay, she's looking up the instructions. You're going to call us during the show. You have an hour to call. It's 775-360-6740. 775-360-6740. I'll put it in the chat. Three six zero six seven four zero. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Um, call in in the next hour, and Sienna will answer the phone, and you'll get a free ticket to the Great Awakening Festival, which is next weekend, Friday through Monday, in kind of like the Flanagan area. Of so wait, it's the first person to call in. Is that how it's going? Yeah. Frick so it. starting now. Just so do if it. You're Just trying to get now. in on this. It's next weekend. So what is that? That's like the. It's next weekend. It's coming the up fast. Seven, the eighteenth. The seventeenth. What, what are the dates here? So that we are, we're, we're definitely clear. Oh, it's not doing it. Um, I don't know why I can't talk in the chats. It's yeah, the eighteenth through the twentieth. Yeah, you put it in the chat. 18 through the 20th. Okay, guys, I'm going to throw it in the here's chat. The, here's the phone number. Yeah, right. call us now. Call them in now. Oh, Miss Cleo, you can never get away from that, you know? <laughs> All right, so um, that's what's happening with us. I'm going to be less mustache now. It's me. Were you fooled this whole time? <laughs> it was, it's Wait, I be. thought it was this cowpoke. I know. Well, we are cowpoke. Okay, I just put it, the uh, phone number in the chat. Awesome, thank you. And we'll um, let you know when somebody claims the ticket. Yes, so I gotta pull up the video. What do we got, what do we got? You wanna go Hannah Eddy first? <gasps> Let's go! Someone's calling! Whoa. You're calling! You're gonna get a free ticket! Who is it? You're gonna come party with us. It's Micah! Micah! It's Micah! Of course, Micah, you won the ticket. You deserve it. You've you really it. deserve it, Micah. You can't hear us because you're on the phone right now. Well, he will hear us. I freaking love that. Yes. Ticket's taken. Sorry, guys. All right. Micah for the win. All right, we're going to go into a little video. We went to Hannah Eddy's show at Cafe... Capello. Thank you. Cafe Capello, right on the river there on first. Formerly Java Jungle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, really close to us, and she just has a little show up. It's the satellite show for Holland Project. Yeah. Um, and we made a little video. Alicia made a video. Oh, okay. Here. Hold on, folks. Ooh, I meant to take this out. I messed it up. Ugh, this happened last time, too. I couldn't drag it over. Uh-oh. I don't know why it's getting... Technical difficulties, y'all. Here it is. I can't believe Micah just won. Micah, we're gonna go to a festival together? I'm stoked. There we go, oh my goodness. Sorry guys, it's been a weird night technically around here. I don't a couple know of why. issues. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh. It's not uh, working right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the Great Awakening Festival though as well, if you are still thinking about going, even if you didn't get a free ticket, but you'd like to go, you can buy a ticket mm -hmm. and there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff. It sounds like, um, I mostly am excited that there's gonna be a place that's serving kombucha the whole time and <laughs> uh, refreshing drinks. Plus a so, burrito. Oh, there's gonna be a 24 hour burrito uh, establishment. You know, There's gonna be music and stuff too. We're just like, ooh, burritos and kombucha were there. Yeah, we're just, you know. All right, let's watch this very short Hannah Eddy video. Um, and because we gotta go fast, because we're gonna interview Caitlin, and mm -hmm. that's gonna be super fun. So yeah. yeah, here we go. Here it is. And also, oh, let me quick say before we go into it that at the end of the video, I just cut in a little bit of the interview we did of her back um, a few weeks ago when she uh, had first finished her Find Your Flow mural um, that's here in Reno. So that's where we are. At the, the, the second clip is from that and it's just like her talking about her style of art and um, her advice relative to that. So I felt like that was a cool thing to come to reflect on after seeing her, her work hung in, the, in, this, uh, in this gallery show. So it's gonna be great. Yeah, Aunt Hannah's awesome. Her her murals are everywhere. Okay, bye. <laughs> Here, open the door. Thank you. Okay, come on in.
it's funny, like with my style, I'm dancing the line of like, I don't want to go too cartoony sometimes. Like I'll draw something and I'm like, mm, I need to just tone that back a little, yeah. just personally. So it's fun to play, play on that, like super graphic, playful, illustrative style on like a large scale. It's sweet too, because your style, it, it, I'm watching it pop up and it's becoming, it's like so iconic too. It's so you. Thank and you. like, that's really freaking rad when you can see something and you're like, that's that artist, you know? I love that. I wish, I feel like uh, I struggle with that as an artist. I'm like, I, I don't mean, have I a style. I like I've always struggled with it too. And I really took a step back and was like, okay, what do I admire about certain artists? And it was that similar thing of like, man, it's just so cool when you see something and you're like, I know who that is. Yeah. You know, so I just like really just hunkered down a few years ago and was like, I'm going to just figure out what I really love to draw and what just like makes me excited to get up in the morning and draw and just draw those things and see okay. what happens. That's <laughs> so, great. That's yeah. a really good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel like one of the things we like to ask is how, what advice do you have for artists who are, you know, coming into the, their art or themselves or, you know, trying to bring their, bring what they're doing to the next level. Yeah. And it sounds like, I mean, I think like that is pretty good advice. Like, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that at all, but yeah. So, I mean, finding like a medium that it doesn't really matter. You're like, I love to draw with Sharpies or I love to use my iPad or I love to use colored pencils. Like find that thing that you don't get sick of using mm -hmm. and then just like take that tool to make the stuff that you're excited to make you know like don't focus so much on like making it perfect or whatever just like go through stuff and just find i mean it's kind of just like life like you got to try a bunch of stuff to really figure out like what you love yeah and just Absolutely. keep doing it and keep pushing it and don't settle for things that are like you think other people are gonna want you to do or whatever like it's a hard balance especially with like social media these days if you post something that like so many people love and you're like I wasn't really feeling that like you kind of just got to be like I don't like it so that's not me I don't know <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. We were just we're saying, struggling tonight. Yeah, we were just, we literally were trying to tell you that we're struggling because we just went to the Reno River Festival all day with our kids and in the <laughs> hot why. sun. It's it's because we were in Reno. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were just, well, because we were in the hot sun with our children, we running were in the around, hot sun with our children, trying to be good around. moms, mm -hmm. riding all the rides. It was good. They had a great time. Um, going in the little balloons. It's packed. We'll play. We're gonna play a little video for you guys of it, and maybe it'll make you want to go, or maybe it'll make you not want to go because it's real busy there. And also, mm -hmm. just so you know, it's actually cost money this year. I understand it's been free in the past. Um, I was never able to attend it before, but this year it's ten dollars if you're over eighteen. So kids are free. You can bring your dog or whatever, but you gotta pay ten bucks. For yeah, but then you get a wristband and you can go back tomorrow too, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. So it's mm -hmm. just like ten bucks for two days. That's yeah. not terrible. No. Um, and there's a local artist there, which mm -hmm. is cool. Live got, music was happening. Mm -hmm. I got some sarsaparilla. But if you don't nice. feel like paying, then you can also just go put your kid on a ride on the side that you don't have to pay for. Mm, it's true. If you <laughs> actually go to Cafe Capello or whatever. Yeah, Cafe Capella. Is so like you go right there. Walk down from yeah, there. Yeah, and see Hannah Eddie's show and get coffee. Yep. And then you walk right down, and then that's the area where it's free. Mm -hmm. And then you can put your kid on rides for free. Yeah, and you can like dip your toes in the well, water. Well, you still have to get tickets, yeah. But you can kind of watch what's happening and listen to the music. So yeah. That's the insider So scoop. if you want to have like a budget experience that's like not the whole thing, but a little bit of it, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah, for sure. It's basically the same. Yeah. Um, but we'll play like a little video of the River Fest, <laughs> and then we're gonna go to Caitlin and yeah. talk about Art on Tap this this month, which is happening next Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out, thank you, 
to Tim for telling me that the ticker was wrong. I had the wrong date in the ticker. So it's this Thursday and it's six to nine. I fixed it, thank you. Um, yeah, and we're gonna play this video of this Woodward Fest. Let's do it. today. Do you want to introduce yourself and talk about your background? Sure. So, hey everyone, my name is Caitlin Young. Um, I am the CEO and co-founder of Electric Digital with my husband and business partner Kyle. Um, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about this upcoming art show this Thursday with you guys. So um, in 2020, um, our business was affected like basically every other business and we lost a lot of work. Um, and after the murder of George Floyd, we really kind of wanted just to seize the opportunity because we had more time to get involved in the community. So we kind of just leaned in on being part-time for a while and then filling that space with trying to make our community better um, after watching George Floyd get murdered at the hands of police. So we were inspired um, by seeing the Washington DC mayor do that massive Black Lives Matter mural leading up to the White House. And so that just kind of got us thinking, well, Reno is a pretty artsy town, like, and it was kind of disheartening that there wasn't really like a large movement happening. So we were just thinking like, what could we do to be the best allies that we could, also leaning on our own passions to kind of bring this issue more to the community's forefront. So we were just kind of like poking around, joined the Black Lives Matter Facebook group, and then um, learned of this gentleman who now is a very close friend, his name is Jamie Ellis, and he was in town um, visiting from California because this was the closest major city that uh, was next to him because he was up in Susanville and um, came and kind of held space. Sorry guys. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's my alarm to put my chickens away. Oh no, the chickens. <laughs> yeah, so Jamie came um, and sat in the downtown city Reno Plaza at the Believe sign uh, or sculpture for over a week, kind of just wow. holding a space and he had chalk and art supplies and posters and just invited the community kind of just to like have a discussion and make your mark if you so chose to kind of just like put your feelings on paper because it was a big deal and still is a very big deal. 
Um, and so we were really inspired by what he was doing and that kind of launched this entire exhibit. It's a lot. It's yeah. A lot. Um, that's really cool. Thanks for just jumping into the backstory. So for those of you who are maybe haven't seen on our socials yet or anything, um, but this Thursday we have Art on Tap, like we said earlier, and the theme is BLM, is Black Lives Matter. So we're going to be showcasing the show that Caitlin's talking about, We Are the Sea, um, which is these protest signs and reaction art uh, that was actually at Sierra Arts Foundation mm -hmm. last year. And so we were inspired when we were talking to Yarn Girl last week about her BLM piece. It just made me be like, oh yeah, I had already talked to Caitlin about this and it just seems like, you know, it was just the one year anniversary and it seems like a good time to be like, hey, this still, obviously this, is, this still matters. This is stuff we're still working on. Like, let's put this art up there um, and, and continue the discussion because yeah, the work's not done, right? So. We're still, we're still doing the work. And there's a lot of work to do. I think that's why this art project was so cool. Obviously, you wish you won't have to make an art project like this at all, but I mean, you guys know better than anyone, art can really be pretty persuasive. And yeah. I think, um, although we more so are curators of this exhibit, we have probably 30 yeah. original pieces to kind of fill space. Um, but this was a community project, so it was really important for us not to censor anyone's words as long as it wasn't like direct hate speech um, or anything that would really draw yeah. um, some weird vibes, but we didn't have that problem at all. But yeah, we didn't want to censor anyone's voice because we really believe and still believe that everyone's voice is valid um, and diverse. So. We also joined um, Shades of Queening at their um, uh, Juneteenth event and um, had a little booth um, and with Jamie Ellis who was holding the space and every time someone would come and either donate a piece or create a piece on the spot, he would use painter's tape to not disrupt the sculpture but to put, to cover it in the art and then he would take it down every single day wow. and then every morning re-put it up. Um, so he had a lot of interesting conversations with our houseless population, um, with teenagers skating, with tourists coming to visit Reno um, and I'm just so grateful on behalf of the city what he really did for our city and part of that he was kind of like because he's not from here um, and so he put out a post on the Black Lives Matter Facebook group and said, should I stay or should I go? Um, I can't do this forever, but I would like my efforts to be continued by the community if there's interest to do so. Mm -hmm. So he kind of did a call out and 15 to 20 people showed up the next day. And it was really, really special. And I think it's a moment I will never forget where we had, um, veterans from the military. We had um, eight-year-olds, teenagers, moms, dads, drag queens, um, truly every walk of life just sitting in the middle of downtown having a really honest and open conversation of what this means primarily for a lot of us who are not black. Um, we did have several black members, but they were not the majority. So it was also kind of navigating this new world for a lot of us that because of the pandemic kind of opened our eyes to a lot of other things going on in our country where otherwise we were just kind of getting caught up in the rat race and just kind of in the same light of school shootings, so many happen, you just be get, begin to become desensitized and it was a really great opportunity, and I can't speak for the group, but for myself to really like re-wake up. And I never thought I was a racist person, but I never really made a point to be anti-racist either. So it was a really big turning point for me personally, but we really wanted to make sure uh, it wasn't our story to tell. Um, we just wanted to uplift and support the voices that hadn't been heard for way too long. Um, 
And yeah, so it was really exciting bringing the community together. And the reason it was called We Are the Sea was um, my husband actually wrote a poem. And the entire concept was most of the artwork donated was physical signs people had at the marches. Mm -hmm. And so they're tattered, cardboard, um, and we're like, okay, how can we create something that is more than just a few signs on wood? And so we, knowing kind of a lot of these were probably repurposed trash or, you know, a box from Costco, mm -hmm. um, we kind of wanted to carry that spirit forward and create the entire space using as much reusable materials um, as we could. So we created this massive wave of voices using multiple sizes of cardboard boxes. Nice. If anyone needs to know where to get cardboard in town, please let me know. And if you need cardboard, let me know because our garage is still full of cardboard. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we maybe, got... Yeah, maybe we can use some of it for Alicia's art, kids' yeah, art installation. We have seriously so many. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've got big furniture boxes that mm -hmm. used to hold couches from tiny little boxes and created this three-dimensional space. Nice. that we then plastered the posters over to kind of create this physical wave. And if it's okay, I would like to read Kyle's poem because Absolutely. I think it really ties it together. Okay, let me pull it up here. Okay, so it's titled, We Are the Sea. Separate, we are drops of water. Together, we are the sea. You can swallow drops. You can't swallow the sea. You feel our weight, our strength, our motion. Our form changes but we remain the sea. We are fear and pride and rage, and so are you. We are love and hope and light, and so are you. You have been away too long. Please return to the sea. And so that poem he actually printed on a big banner that we hung inside the gallery. Um, but I think it's just pretty special because it really kind of takes this power of the people idea where one voice can be lost in the dark, but when all of us rally together looking at what happened in Portland night after night after night after night, um, you know, you have people questioning, does protesting really change anything? And I would say, like, across American history, some of the most major changes was because people took to the streets. So, yeah, it was a weird time, um, but I'm so grateful to have been afforded the time to work on that project. But the show was so short at Sierra Arts Foundation because uh, they book out their exhibits yeah. a year in advance. So uh, they're actually a client of ours. So we had some inside help. They were like, hey, we have this idea. Like, is it even feasible? And Tracy Oliver, the executive director, was so gracious to us. And they had, it was kind of coinciding with, they had a pandemic member show mm -hmm. um, where they were showcasing artwork that artists created during quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, but there wasn't a large amount of submissions, and so we were able to kind of like work with the community show alongside this quarantine member show. So that dichotomy and juxtaposition was really interesting too. Yeah, yeah, because you had Zoe Bray's um, illustrations, and she had like a really small sketch of a BLM march, and then on the opposite wall was all of this artwork. So yeah, it was fun. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And so we're going to be setting this up at our attack. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so it won't be the same exact layout. Yeah. Um, but I'm really excited for the pieces. Uh, Josie Rock had a, a small piece in the show. Yeah, I think Joe is going to be bringing some of his larger pieces from when he did the artwork on City Hall mm -hmm. um, after, after the marshes and stuff. So that'll be really cool. Um, and I was like, you should definitely bring some of your prints because I'm sure everybody would love to get a print of his. He's just, yeah, he's the best. He's, he's the best. He is the best. Zakaya Stubbs, who is a local black artist, um, donated some pieces. Um, Naomi Devine with the Potentialist Workshop. She actually did some live sketching of people who spoke at the second protest. Um, so, uh, 
we have kind of like standalone posters and artwork, but we, at this year, Arts Foundation, they have those big, massive windows yeah. that face Virginia, opposite of the Pioneer Center. And um, in cardboard fashion, we took massive pieces of cardboard and kind of muraled and collaged the smaller pieces. So a lot of Naomi's pieces are there, um, which are really, really good. We also, through the Potentialist Workshop, have a piece of art by Leo Sudres, who is from Paris. Wow. And um, he was an exchange student here um, and worked with Naomi and uh, donated the piece, and it's really, really cool. It's like an awesome. eight or nine piece yeah. painting. I will say that we actually really need volunteers to help us because this show is just going up for one night here, um, and it's a lot of pieces. So we, all day Thursday, um, are planning to just be taping this show literally to the walls of our building, um, so and hanging it on the fence. And if anybody wants to come in um, at any point during Thursday before Art on Tap, so hopefully we'll be done by like four or five. So if you want to come in, I'm gonna get, probably get here at nine. Um, I literally just need people to be hand, like a person to hand me a thing so I can put it on the ladder and not have to get up and down the ladder a hundred times. Um, so come in if you want help with the show because it's a community show, and I think it's only fitting that a community helps put it up. I think that'd be really beautiful. I did want to say too, we really don't know who all of the artists are or the contributors because we collected them from so many different sources. We were at the 4th of July protest in Carson. We got pieces donated then. Well, the majority of them were through Jamie, who was there for over a week. Some donated to us at the gallery, so we can identify some of the pieces, but if you're watching and you donated and would let like to let us know that that was yours, I would love that. Also, if you want it back, that's totally cool too. We never had the intention of kind of like taking all of this art and hoarding it. So I'm just so, so grateful to really like extend its livelihood. And if anyone is watching that would like to push it further, yeah. we're all ears. Um, you know, there's probably some pieces that can live a long time. Uh, so we, We've already actually been talking about um, creating like a Reno time capsule show once a year here, um, like a current events show, you know, and this actually like, you know, this show made us start thinking about that, thinking about how certain art needs to, I mean, all, ideally all art, right, needs to be archived, but how certain pieces like we feel like maybe the generator needs to take on archiving. So we were already talking about taking a photo of each one of these pieces and having it at the bare minimum, a digital archive of this show and then starting to do that every single year where we just have a community group show based on current events and we archive it every single time which I think would be so powerful especially when in 10 years 15 years we can go back and have this like you know this retrospective oh my god Ugh, that would be so beautiful yeah, I would love to help with that cool yeah that awesome. idea sounds rad I think so many people too you know who Reno is their new home. Um, it's so interesting just to learn about the artists and makers and creators who've left their mark on Reno, yeah. who were once here and have moved on, or who are still here. But yeah, I think until you really get embedded deep into the art scene, it's often difficult to kind of find that historical story of yeah. all of the creators. You know, yeah, I love that. Sure. Yeah, there's so many times when you're like, oh, you just see an artist's work come up a bunch of times, and it's like, oh, that person was here right. for this five-year period and made a bunch of things and then, you know, moved to a different place. Yeah. Um, so the artist, I've already, sorry, Jamie? Jamie Ellis That's was cool. the activist. And yeah. he went back to Susanville? Um, he's actually living on a farm with friends in Hawaii oh, nice. right now. Yeah, he has a really interesting story. Um, he decided to live a life outside of capitalism. So he refuses to buy into the system or take a formal job. He does a lot of volunteer work or trade work. Cool. He co-ran um, like a big uh, collective in India. Um, Wow. He's originally from the East Coast and kind of like, yeah, made it out West and so, he's currently in Hawaii. Nice. I'm guessing. And kept going and went really well. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I w- well, I was going to say, like, is there a way we could, you know, connect or, or promote? But I'm guessing there is no social media or website if it's anti-capitalist, <laughs> well, he, anti-system. He actually does have a website. Um, cool. It's called Holistic Veganism. Um, and, yeah, he is such a good person just to, like, talk to. Um, he's nice. got a really interesting world perspective, mm-hmm. and he spent a lot of time talking to Reno citizens, and probably with people a lot of us might not feel super comfortable talking to. Um, so yeah, I think even just his own perspective of the two weeks he spent in Reno is really valuable. Mm-hmm. Maybe he can record something for your capsule. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, that's so cool. And that's so special that he just like felt called to come out here and then and just show up for Reno and facilitate so inspiring yeah conversations so, and, yeah. and art out wow. of that we actually the kind of core group that just kept going we like went for a whole week seven days and on the seventh day we were all like should this be a thing and we kind of wanted it to be a thing um and so we gave it a name and we called ourselves believe in Nevada and started this kind of low-key activist group cool um and the website is still live Um, we have a lot of community resources up there especially if you need help but are uncomfortable calling the police Um, there's a lot of community resources for mental health Um, so yeah if you or a loved one is interested you can just go to believeinnevada.com the group has since kind of fizzled out um, especially with the pandemic we were meeting in the summer still mass but once yeah. the winter hit we couldn't really find a, like a comfortable space indoors during the pandemic but i think there's a lot of interest out there um, kyle and i just need help to maintain the group at large so if anyone is looking for a way to get involved in the community cool. and would like to maybe re resurrect believe in nevada we're ready um we just can't do it alone so. yeah I feel that. as you guys know <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like i have 75 great ideas and things that i know need to happen yeah. but yeah or even you know if it's a basic like one of our biggest kind of goals coming out of these discussions and like how can we make the community better how can we be a resource is we figured at least believe in nevada.com could be an online resource for all of the community groups, nonprofits, organizations that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so even if you're trying to like get a word, the word out about something, we can at least put it on our events calendar, throw it up on the social and help amplify that message. Cool, yeah, because there are so many mutual aid gr- mm-hmm. groups that have popped up during all of the pandemic and all of the tumultuous times. and. Um, yeah, and it's like I only have been seeing them because of the Facebook groups I'm in and because of my Instagram like algorithms. But certainly, like if you weren't from Reno or if you weren't on socials in an aggressive way, like it would yeah. be hard to find that stuff. I would say yeah, like a really great current activist group is Reno Loves You, which was formerly the Reno Instagramies, ran by Natalie Handler. She's ha- helping tackle the houseless population and the sweeps. I'm sure a lot of you saw there was yeah protesting at the city last week. Um, so if you're looking to get involved, they're very, very active and are looking for help right cool. now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, um, yeah, we're friends with Mary from Rise. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, following her stuff all the time. And then also uh, Reno Burrito Project. Yeah, yeah so Yeah, cool. I would love to volunteer with them. I haven't yet. Yeah. yeah, and then there's uh, Make Food Not Bombs, mm-hmm. Washoe and Reno. There's two different orgs. Yep. Um, Action is um, com- up and coming in Nevada, which is a way for activists specifically looking for social justice to get involved. Um, but yeah, if you have no idea what is out there, and because I know it's especially like with all of the scrolling and tapping, yeah, it's yeah. hard to kind of keep track. So I have no problem sending out resources if anyone is interested, because it cool. can be hard to find sometimes. Yeah, do you have a newsletter? We don't have a newsletter, but we would love to create one. We used to um, when we were really active in the summer, but yeah, we just don't have enough volunteers right now. Yeah, okay, if you want to volunteer on something, guys. We're ready. Yeah. Because there's so much work to be done, and I would say there's space for everybody. We are very inclusive, 
um, full of love and support and whether you can volunteer for 30 minutes or three hours, we can find a job for you. A job. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, everyone should come and see the show. It's going to be just one night at Art on Tap from six to nine. Also, Revolutionary Sounds will be playing. Uh, they played at our grand opening, so that's really cool. And we have a few folks from uh, Black Wall Street, Reno, that will be here doing poetry. Uh, Don, who is one of like the leaders. Best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited for that. And we'll also have other uh, black artists who will be here displaying their art. And it's gonna be such a nice night. I'm really excited for it. So please come out. That's next Thursday. Um, anything? Two Fifty Bell Street. Yeah, Two Fifty Bell. Anything else you want to share with the good people? Um, just one last thing, I guess. My friend Natalie, um, during a lot of the days that Jamie started just collecting pieces, she would do live painting, and she started hosting um, painting days every Tuesday, where she would bring canvases and supplies. Um, and just allow people to kind of be creative. But she painted a beautiful portrait of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. So she was hoping to bring those two. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So does she want to paint live as well? I can ask her. Yes. Please. Natalie, if you're watching. Do you want to come paint live? I'll text you. But. Yeah, that's also another, that's a good point. Like, if you are interested in bringing art to this show or to any art on tap, it's just like Signal Boost. All you have to do is send us a message. Like, we are so open. Um, literally just info at the reno generator.com and we would love to host your art so uh, same thing with like playing music we're having a table like this you know is a community event for all of you just like signal boost is a community platform for everybody so just hit us up and we are happy to host you that's what it's all about yeah i'm really excited i've been wanting to come to one thanks yeah i hadn't seen the new space yeah so welcome if you guys haven't come yet you gotta come it's so cool it's pretty cool it's pretty cool. Yeah. Too bad I mean, look it. at this chair. I know. Look at what I'm sitting in. Line of Liz. All right, I'm going to go back yeah, over here. Go. Thank you so much, Caitlin. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to flip this all around. Intro. Now Sprocket's changing over to the next. <laughs> changing to the next thing. See, this is why we need more help, guys. Yeah. Because it's just me being crazy running around. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, um, it's a little hectic right now. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to flip this back over. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Now it's just me. Now we got to wait for Thank you. you to come back over. <laughs> and with the mic. Well, you don't have to wait. Do you need this? Yeah, yeah. This is why we need a PA, guys. Thank you. Um, but I will say somebody just reached out to us on YouTube and thanks for doing that. And we yeah, would Scully, like your help. Thank you, Scully. We just got this new microphone. So we um, are kind of waiting to see how it, it does before we are sure that we need more help with the sound but if anybody has any feedback on it although are. you know we could always use a hand to like move the microphone you know mm, it's not super fun but i mean it is pretty fun and we'll feed you <laughs> um yeah but we'll follow up with you scully thank you for hitting us up on on uh, youtube we yeah, appreciate that watching. yes uh okay so the one last thing we have right what time is it? Oh, yeah. We're running oh out of time. Oh, my gosh. We're out of time here. Yeah. Well, we could listen to Caitlin talk forever, I feel like. She's so good. Um, we have Brad. Yeah, I know. I know. It's Instagram Roundup. But I really need to play this one more video first. Brad Carney's video. Oh, yeah. So this is a really quick little video that we um, we took a walk down to the retrack uh, the other day. And um, just quick met. Uh, Brad Carney, who's the artist who is leading that project, painting that ground mural um, that's at the happening retrack. at the yep. retrack, where they're just kind of redoing that whole space, and it's called Locomotion. Um, let's jump into it really fast. Yeah, let's just go. And then we'll do Instagram Roundup. Yep. Thanks for pairing with us, guys. Here to create locomotion. This is a uh, 18,000 square foot 
a ground mural that's been uh, was created to do uh, I guess creative place making and they're going to be gardening the edges and there'll be food truck events and children and adult festivals and things like that. Basically I created it so that Reno could play with it. So I hope you like it. Thank you. Oh yeah, so we told you it was short. <laughs> Super short, and now we can go into Instagram around that. Yeah. But how cool is that that he's from Philly and his wife's from Jersey? Just saying. Because we're from Philly. If you don't know, I'm from Jersey. Thank you, Micah. Thanks, Micah. Instagram roundup, yeehaw. Also, congratulations, Micah. Congratulations. Can't wait to see you there. We're going to film some... Are you going to grow a mustache? Mm, fake mustache. She's got pink ones. So many different. It's all about the stash. Stash life. Yeah, look, Micah, this is going to be us. Can you bring fans? Do you have fans, Micah? We can just bring some beautiful fabrics. Look at this. We're going to clean up, and we're going to eat these donuts. Micah, our future is beautiful. Sorry. OK. <laughs> we're just excited. Uh, Instagram Roundup. Reno Food Systems is switching their their farm stand hours to afternoons, probably because it's really hot and it's a little cooler at that time, I'm gonna guess. And so it is now going to be every Sunday, three to seven. Reno Food Systems, they're awesome and they have sheeps. They have a few sheeps. One has three horns, go check it out. I think it had a baby. Oh. Didn't they have a baby? Oh, here's the top view of the Brad oh, yeah. Carney mural. Mm-hmm. There it is. It's not finished yet, but it's looking pretty good. They took a break today. They've been painting for many days. And I guess they're putting like a dog park now in that yep. and some trees. Not in and, that. The well, dog park's that, gonna be like across the way. Yeah. It's just gonna be like a whole, a much more usable area, hopefully. Yeah, that'll be great because we all really miss Reno Sculpture Fest and are sad about it every day. <laughs> Um, 775 Reno, uh, 1987 Co. They're great. They, sorry, I'm just like reading things at you. <laughs> but they're at Reno River Fest. And I'm always like chatting with them on Instagram. They're a great local um, company and they have cool shirts. Cool and shirts. You should go get one from the River Fest and support local. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe it's woman owned. Nice. Yes. Oh, drop off your reusable masks mm -hmm. because hopefully, you know, you're vaxxed and we can all be out in the open now. So just get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. And if, you, if you're getting rid of them, maybe you want to keep them. It's fine if you want to keep them. But if you don't, Ooh, maybe don't our them trash, show, take them to these places. Yeah. Maybe our capsule show should just be a show that we use all masks to make art. Could be. Mm. Um, these are all places you can take it, including Urban Roots, which we talked about earlier. Yep. And the co-op. And I have the co-op in here somewhere Pangolin else. Cafe. I want to go there so bad. Yeah, but when you go to the co-op to drop off your mask, you could also get Ooh. some new booch. Oh, new Delicious booch. folk brewing kombucha is back on tap because now COVID mm, is less. Kombucha on tap. Yeah. Jasmine flower, lavender, ginger, vanilla. Oh, my God. A lot I of love kombucha. kombucha. I, I make know. myself sick drinking too much. It's a thing that can happen. I mean, obviously, right? It's like fungus juice. Don't drink too much. I drank like four one day. What happened? It was bad. I was so sick. But like, what kind of sick? I don't know. Do we want to? <laughs> you, we don't want to know. But I kind of do. I felt really bad even the next day. I like was hungover, and I don't drink alcohol anymore. I was really mad. It's like I'm not supposed to get hungover anymore. But so my body was like, don't drink four flour. Cups of juice, you idiot. Yeah. Um, Carson Farmers Market is back, and it's on North Stewart Street, 8:30 a.m. to one. And that's cool because uh, we want to be featuring. Get some herbs. Yeah, look at that. Oh, mm. look at that. Mm. Mm. Oh, looks nice. Mm. Okay, all the sounds. So yeah, Carson City. You know, we want to support uh, all of the Northern Nevada stuff. Mm -hmm. And Carson's not far. If you wanted not to far. pop down. Not far. 80s night tonight. I I don't even know. MTV Unplugged takes over the stage outside, 6:30 to 9:30. There's gonna be some Nirvana. You know what's gonna happen. Yeah, so that's happening tonight. I don't know. I thought maybe you might want to go, guys. And I think that might be it. That might be all I got here. What else do we got? Just because we're like right at the end. We're right at the end. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Eddie it's House gonna is going to be having something in August. An open house. Support the Eddie House. Oh, yeah. Pioneer Center announced their um, Broadway Reno. 
So they've got Hamilton, Fiddler on the Roof, Jesus Christ Superstar, and freaking cats. Freaking cats. And then this Hades Town, which I don't know anything about this, so I'll probably go to that one. I've seen cats on Broadway. Yeah, I have too, because that's what you do when you're from the East Coast. You've all seen cats. I hated it. Really? I was so I afraid. It. I was terrified. You must have been a baby. Yeah, I was like eight or like seven. And when and you're sitting, I'm not gonna give too much have away you here. The movie? No. Oh, we should watch it. Oh no, I don't even. But there's one part in the Broadway show where everybody's like sitting in the theater in their seats, right? Because it's a theater show. And the cats come from behind, and it's mm -hmm. all pitch black, and they're all yeah, like, they're all over the place. and they're all like crawling from all different places. Holy shit! That is terrifying for a small yeah, child. I mean, you don't want like humanoid cats crawling in the darkness near you. No, that's true. I mean, nobody really wants that. Maybe as an adult, I'm sure. Pe uh, well, I'm certainly sure. people yeah, want. Yeah. Yeah. Humanoid cats crawling at night, maybe for you, but for me as a child, I'm just saying it was very scary. For you as an adult, so, though. I don't know. Well, Alicia's looking at, uh, this is what Alicia's been looking at here. What? What have I been looking at? <laughs> Speaking of, literally, this is her browser history, so just saying. Uh, all right, guys. I think that's oh, all we got. Oh, that pink cat motorcycle helmet. Just no, this imagine. one. This one is so cute. Um, oh, I'm going to bring us back to top level real fast as we wrap it up today. So we're going to this festival next weekend. Yeah. And I don't know what we're going to do about signal boost. We might pre-record something I was thinking and have it somehow play. Um, and I was also thinking about live streaming just during Art on Top. That'd be cool. Because we definitely will not have internet in the middle of the desert. Yeah, so. it's going to be in the middle of nowhere, so there's no internet. Yeah, sorry. So TBD, guys. Yeah, TBD, we're going to try to maybe work something out, but it might just be that we go there with Micah and all of you that are clearly going to come now to the great awakening festival Hopefully. and we just make a lot of cool videos everyone rides on my quad we wear mustaches we eat burritos um and instead of being live we stay hyped yes uh and we just do that all weekend and then uh, we come back the following week and we play the videos for everybody yep yeah i might There's have to options. make a TikTok just for these videos that we're about to create guys Ooh. just saying all right, well, thanks so much for being with us for the 15th episode of Signal Boost. And as always, if you want to share anything, you want to be on the boost, you want to hype your friend, you want to hype a local business, hit us up, info at therenogenerator.com or info at rprfm.org. Message us on socials, get at us any way you can. We're just here for you. So, yeah, have a lovely night. Bye. See you at the thanks festival. See you at Great Awakening. And then are on tap. Yes, and at our top, for sure, for sure. Bye.